All right. Hey, folks. It's Tuesday, the 18th of June, 2019, and this is the weekly meeting for SIGDOCs for Kubernetes. Uh, I'm back. I've been away on a long vacation. Um, many thanks to Jim Angel for running meetings and uh, minding the shop while folks are out. Or, yeah, while I'm out, while Jennifer has been new, while Jared's been out. Um, all good. Hello, Jim. We're just saying nice things about you. Um, so Jim, uh, do you do you want to run the show? I could go ahead and go for it. I've been all over the place, so <laughs> if you okay. don't mind, that'd be great. Much appreciated. I don't mind at all. Thanks. Uh, thanks again. And for... Welcome back, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. All right, um, let's start with new contributors. Um, Tunda, I know that you're not new, but I think this is my first time actually seeing you. So hello, it's nice to nice to see you. Nice to meet you officially. Hello. Um, this is my. I think this is my first time actually coming to this meeting. So you know, yeah. Okay. It was Bernie that told me like there's a meeting going on. I didn't. I didn't even know. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm very happy. To, happy to be here. We're happy to have you. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see. Um, Josiah, are you new? You're new to me. I'm new. I actually just submitted my first um, PR uh, last week. Welcome. Thank you for the PR. <laughs> nice. All right. Oh, shit. Uh, Josiah, what's, what's your GitHub ID? Uh, it's, well, I could spell it out for you. It's just my, uh, it's my first name and then my last name. So uh, it's. Do you want to put it in chat? Yeah, I'll put it in chat. Thank you. Uh, I think that's it for new contribs. Uh, okay, so let's go on to updates and reminders. Um, our PR wrangler this week is Steve Perry. Hello, Steve, and thank you. And next week, our PR wrangler is Caitlin Bernard. Um, let me spell her name correctly in the agenda. There we go. And um, when I was looking at the um, Wrangler list to um, see who was going to be this week's Wrangler, I realized that we're like at the end of the um, the Wrangler schedule for Q1 and Q2. So we've got to generate that. Um, to this point, I have generated the list of Wranglers manually. And I will say, frankly, that I hate it. So if there is a chance to um, automate that, or make it better if somebody would like to take that on. Um, it's probably like a really easy, just like script nugget in Python. Uh, you do it like a, with like a, a single list comprehension. Um, but uh, yeah, if there was somebody who would like to automate that to make it even like less slightly painful to generate that list, uh, that would be very welcome. Uh, Let's see if I don't if I don't hear anything from anybody. Um, let's see. Let's let's make that a deadline of um, let's make that a deadline of Thursday. Let's see. And if not, uh, then I'll go ahead and uh, generate that list manually again. Cry so many tears while I do it. Uh, okay. Um, 1.15 update. Uh, Barney, take it away. So uh, we have one problem at the moment. Uh, we are trying to uh, um, to fix major conflict that we have for uh, one dev 1.15 branch uh, with the master. Um, we tried a couple a couple of methods, uh, then we failed. So I think. Uh, so I I, th I think we, if one with the um, good credential could uh, just make that branch master to dev 15 directly from there and force push that, that'd be fine. Uh, because if we try to do it from uh, from my branch, I mean from my fork, it doesn't resolve that. Uh, or if somebody has a me better method to do it, uh, I mean we, we could we could do that. Yeah, just that for context. Uh, second is uh, Tunde. Yeah. 
Oh, oh yeah. So um, um, I'm going to be the um the. the so, uh, oh. Oh. So we have Tunde in the meeting and he'll be the leader. Sorry, I, that was really lossy for me. Did, um, do you mind repeating that, Marnie? Uh, we'll be leading the next release. Uh, he has been a shadow for, for the past two releases. So I think uh, uh, Doc uh, for the next week will be in a good hands with Tunde. Yes. Awesome. Um, congratulations, Tunde, and thank you. My internet is not uh, very. My internet is not good, so I uh, will just. Um, I think uh, we may have lost. Uh, Barney to the uh, the whims of the Tanzanian Ocean Cable. I think he's here. I think he's just muting video to see if he can free some bandwidth. Gotcha. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully we get Barney back. Um, for context, uh, right now the the Dev Dash One Fifteen um, release branch has a bunch of merge conflicts in it, and um, we are trying. Uh, to resolve those and uh, get those uh, get that branch mergeable to master, um, I have, have hit the limit of my get through. Um, normally, I would ask um, Misty Linville, um, but I don't think that she's available. Uh, so, Jim uh, did the awesome thing and opened a PR to test infra, asking them for help. Um, but if somebody, uh, if there is someone. Uh, who has like really supreme git foo and is uh, wants to take a look at trying to resolve conflicts on that branch? Uh, the help is very welcome. And uh, well, one thing I'll add to that as well is I'm you know I can't recall when I was doing the release if I was working out of the k slash website branch. So one thing we might uh, consider trying is to um, with um, with Bar Barney now being part of the owner's file and having a little bit more permissions to be able to do certain things. I don't know if that would grant him the right to be able to just clone K website down, fix the merge conflicts and do a forced push for the dev branch. Um, just kind of hit it with a hammer. You know, I know we have some other issues postponing the, the release. Um, so we have a little bit of time, but, but it'd be nice to get this one behind us. Uh, agree. So, uh, so go ahead. One thing. Yeah. So, uh, uh, with the with the permission, I can't actually force push to 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 dev one fifteen. And have you tried that since we added you to the owner's file? I think that was yesterday. Yes, I tried yesterday, which is uh, today in our time. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, so if that didn't work, then that idea is out. Um, I guess my Hail Mary, if we need to, would go ahead, Zach. Um, so adding, uh, being part of that owner's file isn't necessarily, it's not the same thing as having um, write permissions. So let, uh, because I have repo, magic repo admin powers, um, Barney, if I if I give you right access, um, will that like if I add you like as an individual con uh, contributor or like a, a team collaborator to the repo, um, that should give you actual right access. But be aware that with great power comes great responsibility. Yes. So, so basically, what I will do is just uh, resolve conflict and push back to Dev one fifteen. Uh, nothing. Nothing more. Uh, and I'll, I'll add, even if we do have to do it this way, I think at some point SigDocs or our team as a whole needs to make the decision if we want to adopt a new model that allows us to, to operate out of a local branch and what we're doing wrong there. That's where my GitFu kind of reaches limit where I, I didn't really understand what is needed from a 
local copy to resolve merge conflicts of something you don't own on your upstream branch. Um, and, and that was really challenging for me. So uh, Steve Kuznetsov has been great uh, helping on that issue there. I think Juni also commented. So I, I really appreciate that. But I feel like I'm a very novice, <laughs> very much so a novice when it comes to uh, Git and kind of trudging my way through. But what, what I was saying is we need to figure out if we want to hit this with a hammer and then try to solve this long term or if we're just going to use this hammer from uh, this point forward to avoid this happening again, um, you know, for sake of timing, I guess. Sure. Um, I would definitely say let's hit it with a hammer now. Uh, and then we can have like a longer conversation uh, at the start of 1.16 with test infra about uh, how how to resolve uh, or yeah, how to keep the situation from happening again. Um, you know, it's when I, when I was the 1.9 leader, uh, we didn't, we didn't have the same problems because we all had, uh, this is pre-prow, we all had right access to the branch uh, and uh, that just didn't have to deal with uh, trying to, uh, trying to wrangle this through the proxy of prow commands. Um, so yeah, let's. Uh, uh, I, Barney, I will add you as a team collaborator, or as an sorry, as an individual collaborator to the repo, and give you right permissions. And uh, Jim, I'll do the same with you. And uh, uh, hopefully, that will do uh, for a short-term solution, and then we can work with Test Infra and like share our pain points and um, take a look at. Uh, like a better long-term solution, but after this release is done. So, Zach, are, have we had some constraints forced upon us uh, along the lines of using Prow instead of just the way we did it back in 1.9? Yes. And why do we have to submit to to that? I mean, could, couldn't could we make a case for going back to the way we did it in 1.9? I think we can, and I think that we can make that case based on the fact that um, website has uh, a unique branching structure yeah. for this that, you know, uh, where folks in other repositories uh, cut to uh, where master is the, uh, the development branch and then they cut uh, like cherry pick to a release branch. And we do that the opposite because we are continuously deploying. Uh, we work in a release branch and then um, commit to master, like merge to master. Yeah. Um, I think we could uh, make a pretty solid argument that uh, because we are working in a mega branch like that, we're not we're not cherry picking individual commits. We're working in a mega branch. That it makes sense um, to have direct write write permissions. Uh, I, I was there. Yeah, because my memory from from back then is that. I, Andrew Chen did it for one release, and I think I followed, and um, I followed his lead on, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day, uh, way of just keeping on top of this. And I think it had something to do with doing a certain kind of merge every single day, right, as we were approaching. And it, there were a few hassles, but it tended to work pretty well, and it avoided the the big problem at the end. So um, I would think if we could make a case for for going back to doing it that way and then consult with Andrew, I think he'd have a, a firm, pretty firm memory of how we, we did it. You know, we, we might be able to get back to something that worked a little better. So, so I think I have a little small comment there on some yeah. context is that I saw what Andrew was doing during his release cycle when I was uh, doing the release cycle myself, just looking and seeing how things were done. And it looked yeah. like that was done via force push to the dev branch uh, after resolving merge conflicts. And that sounds like how we're going to solve it here. Yeah. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm part of the problem, I think, while we kind of shook this model up. Because when I was the release lead, I merged an empty branch into the dev branch and totally wiped it out with a force push. And we had to do a, a git ref log uh, to kind of get back on the right path. So we changed the model from that after having a little bit too much powers <laughs> with uh, the git model that, that I, um, the git issue I ran into. And this is the first release that we've done it this way without having the ability to force push that dev branch. But ultimately, we might just need all together and just be a little bit more uh, responsible with it. Yeah. Um, at, at this point, um, you know, you know more about it than I do because I haven't thought about it for so long. Um, 
but um, you know, but for whatever for whatever that's worth, I remember a couple of cycles where we did that thing where every day we did a um, a merge, and that and that seemed to keep it from getting um, you know growing out of hand. <laughs> sure, part of part of why this is so hairy right now is because we're trying to to um, merge master in really late in the cycle for the first time. Uh, so it's sort of hairy. Uh, by virtue of being late in the cycle, um, so there's going to be there's going to be a bit of yak shaving uh, involved in in fixing these uh, yeah. merge commits. Um, but yeah, Jim, I, I mean, I know that your experience was cautionary in some ways, but I I don't know that that means that it, that was the wrong solution. It, it, does that does that make sense? I think it's just it's one of the one of the hazards that come with having sufficient power to do the thing that needs to be done it means it's also possible to to make mistakes. And if uh, only somebody told me a great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I wasn't there for you, Jim. Sorry. No, no, I'm just I'm gonna joke with you. You totally told me that, and I <laughs> foot and mouth. It's all good. Um, so yeah, I think maybe we just need to make sure. That uh, that folks with the that who have right permissions um, directly have uh, enough enough training and enough context to understand what to do and what not to do. Um, so yeah, there's, a, there's a person each release who's who's the release person, right? <laughs> um, and so I I couldn't we you know give that one person the power you know during that <laughs> during that uh, time right well that's that's what we're talking about doing yeah uh -huh. so like barney is our release lead this time jim was our release lead last time yeah um so yeah just making sure that the release lead um has has the power to um keep those branches clean uh and current and also make sure that they they have enough context and training to um uh, like not force push an empty branch yeah. So, uh, okay, I think we're resolved on that. Um, let us, um, Barney. I wanted. I just want to say thank you for um, sticking with this through uh, through difficult times. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Cheers, man. Uh, okay, let's go to the agenda. Um, let's talk about. Uh, progress on our docs and uh, take a look at um, the issues that we have open. Uh, I see that we have some to do's. Um, I know, let's see, the improve the what is Kubernetes, sorry, introduce a security concept in the concept section. This is 14216. Um, as far as I know, 14495 should have closed this issue, I think. It's when uh, Zach and the security team uh, debuted their um, cloud native security intro. So I think we can actually close um, 14216. Does that sound right to folks? Sorry, I wasn't even looking. Um, it sounds good. Like a... Okay. Uh, all right. Then, let's see. Close by 14,495. Hooray. Okay, let's take a look at um 12 333 what is improve the what is kubernetes page um shavi i know that you have a pr in progress against this um shavi do you want to talk briefly about um where your pr is in progress um i've got a few reviews on it i'm waiting for it to be merged if it's okay um Steve commented on it, um, and um, there were a few others. JD looked at it, but I'm waiting for LGTM and approved to get it merged to the 
master brand. Sure. Is it? Uh, is there any further work on it that needs to be done, or can any um, can any future comments be iterated in a in a future pull request? Yes, I think like if if it's okay, I mean, uh, I have addressed all the comments. We can merge it, and then later on, we can keep updating it over time. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll look at it. I'll look at it today. I'm I'm doing PR wrangling, so I, I'll make sure I look at that one today. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Steve. And thank you, Shavi. Uh, okay, updating QBDM setup docs, 12078. Do we have anything in progress there? Uh, I don't see any PRs in progress against uh, QBDM setup. So if someone wants to grab this, uh, this is. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, what's the current scope of this? I see it here. Um, updating existing topics or create a new topic about setting up and getting started with QBDM. So it, I don't know if it's worth, but I know during the release cycle, uh, SIG multi-cluster or multi-cluster lifecycle, I think it is. Um, they're actively working on refining, I think, Neolit and, um, and a couple other folks from that uh, SIG regularly review and update those cube ADM docs as part of the release cycle. So I don't know if we need to narrow down the focus of what we're trying to accomplish or if we need to pair up and partner with them uh, on this. I don't know, Steve, if you have any background. No, I, I don't know um, what the motivation for this work item was. Um, my guess is Jennifer knows something about it. Does, does that seem right, Zach? Yeah, that's cube ADM is sort of her domain. Yeah. So um, I don't know what Jennifer's availability is like. So I would say let's ping her uh, and invite her to um, clarify the scope. But uh, it sounds like the, the next work here is to, um, uh, to scope this somewhat, to provide a sense of um, what specifically needs to be done. Because uh, I think this might be a, a great prompt for someone like Jennifer who, can, you know, who has the immediate situational knowledge of QBADM. But in terms of like someone coming to this and trying to pick it up and, and know what to do, I don't think there's enough here. So um, we can ping Jennifer. Um, is there someone who uh, uh, is interested in QBADM, um, wants to take that on and um, maybe provide a little bit of scope? Not even necessarily do the work, just uh, provide a description, like take a look at the QBADM docs and uh, get a sense of what needs to happen to have uh, better quality docs there. Well, I am going to leave a note here. Specific. Great to get this issue into an actionable state. And I could ping Jennifer too, uh, just to get scope uh, figured out. But I don't have the bandwidth to fully own the issue, so I can pick that one up. Sure. Uh, I just left a comment on 12078 for Jennifer. Oh, perfect. Uh, All right. Um, 4135, need a top-level top level controllers concept guide. History. Um, uh, that sounds kind of like Andrew to me. I do remember. Okay. Yeah, that, that does sound like Andrew. Um, but it looks like um, like uh, Tim Bannister, SF Tim, um, might have some more context on this. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see, uh, is there someone who'd be willing to like look into, looks like uh, Tim left a comment noting that um, two other um, issues or PRs might be relevant. Uh, this, this is the kind of thing that, that I would volunteer for because I'm interested in it, but I just can't. I, I don't have the time right now. 
okay, let's. Um, is would someone be willing to um, follow up with uh, follow up with Tim and uh, get this get this issue into an actionable state? Yeah, yeah, give it to me. I'll do it. I'll talk to Tim. Sorry, uh, was that who was that? That was Seth. I'll Seth, do it. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. I'll I'll, you. I'll circle back with Tim. See what's up. Cheers. Sorry, trying to navigate multiple windows, multiple tabs. All right. Uh, we've got 12.082 update. A deployment concept topic. So that that kind of should fall to me. Um, me and Andrew and Dominic, um, and we keep talking about it. But uh, Andrew and I both end up just never having time to do it. So um, I don't know whether we, you know, want to scratch it or give it away or just leave it there till you know till the sunshiny day. I, I imagine sometime during the spring we'll, um, I mean, during the um, summer, we will uh, find some time to get to that. Okay. It looks like Tim Bannister is interested in this one as well. Yeah. So, um, let's see, um, by Dominic, you mean? Uh, Dominic Torno. Oh, thank you. Right. Um, yeah, if you want to, let's see, if you want to, like, Steve, do you mind reaching out and, um, like, uh, talking to Tim Bannister and uh, confirming uh, confirming his involvement, just, like, how much he wants to be involved, how much you want to work together? Sure, okay. Thank you. And let's see, 14.272, move object management to tasks. Uh, oh, it looks like um, Karen might have uh, opened and already merged a PR to close this. Yeah, it looks like she did. Awesome. Hooray. Awesome. Uh, okay, so that takes us through um, the issues that we had in the queue. And that leads nicely into our next agenda item um, for our Q2 review and Q3 planning meeting. Um, we are late to talk about this, uh, for which I apologize, um, but I totally don't apologize for going on vacation. Um, and with uh, KubeCon Shanghai next week, um, I don't think it's going to be um, possible or desirable for us to try and schedule a planning meeting um, really before about the middle of July. So I think the, the question that we uh, ought to look at is when in July to have this um, Q2 and Q2 review, Q3 planning. Um, Let's see, just taking a casual look. Um, let's see, Open Source Summit Tokyo is um, the week of the 15th. So uh, I'm going to recommend that we do uh, the Q2 review, Q3 planning. If we want to stick to the, let's see, when we did the Q1 review, Q2 planning, we did that on a Thursday evening. And that seemed to work out pretty well for folks. So if we looked at um, Thursday, July 25th 
for another evening slot. Uh, would that work for folks? Just like uh, and in chat. Yeah, there. Okay. Um, see, Shavi, thank you. Um, Tunde, Barney, um, does that time work well for you? My guess is that it probably ends up being like, uh, like unholy hour in the morning for you. But Tunde, it works for you. Okay, so if we did. Um, uh, I will go back and look at the uh, time slot that we used for um, our Q1 review and um, propose that same time slot for um, Thursday, July 25th. Could I make the minor suggestion to bump it up an hour? <laughs> Do you mean like an earlier, an hour earlier, hour later? An hour earlier. I think there's no way that everyone's going to be happy. We're all in different time zones, but I know myself, I think Brad Topol loves <laughs> Getting near yeah. midnight for them and it's a little, little rough as we're fading out there. On Thursday, July 25th, same time slot, but one hour earlier. That seems totally reasonable. Okay. What an interesting sound. Uh, okay. Um, I will also put together the agenda doc for that. And then for Q2, Q3. And then Q2, Q3 and make it available for input. Um, I'll try and make that as early as possible, but I will give folks at least two weeks two weeks in advance. Uh, will that be enough time for folks? Like if you have two weeks for input on the Q2 review, Q3 planning, is there anybody who's like, no, that's not enough time, I need more? Okay, uh, excellent. Um, Jim, I see you have an agenda item about um, broken links and adding in redirects. So real quick, Jim, you and I spoke on this uh, about this on one of the uh, APAC docs meetings. I had started looking into some tooling to just do like some basic dead link checking for docs. Uh, it was born out of a pull request that was merged that broke like 50 links across various languages. Um, and I don't know if you saw my response in Slack. I had some family stuff that pulled me away, but I'm still looking into to something like that, uh, both as a manual step. Um, maybe to add into like the contributor guide to say, hey, if you're changing links, maybe run this tool. You know, we decide on some sort of open source tool uh, to check for links and then we somehow bake that into uh, an automated step uh, at some point. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, uh, thanks Seth. And uh, I, I recall the conversation now, I couldn't remember at the very uh, time, but there was also a PR that landed that was part of our Q1 or Q2 uh, accomplishments. I forget which one and I won't waste everyone's time trying to pull it up. But we reshifted or shifted a lot of the content and the concepts tasks and set up to be a little bit more readable. Um, a lot of those redirects were captured in a, a, a way in a manner that would just say if you have a broken link, it redirect to a working page. Uh, with how many links removed and how many changes happened, uh, it's possible some of that fell through the cracks uh, where you have broken links now out there that don't have the redirect already in place. Um, so I see two solutions, one there being the redirect solution and like you're working on either dead links and updating redirects to where they should be or something of that nature or, um, um, I lost my train of thought. I guess where I'm getting at is, uh, Google right now is producing these results with pages that come up as 404 or dead links because of the way we've changed them if they don't have that redirect in place. And so I don't know beyond the work you're doing, Seth, to, to address this issue, we might need to consider doing some sort of re-indexing from the Google search engine side. And I know we got plenty of smart folks that could maybe look into what we need to do for that to, uh, to have. Yeah, I think there's actually two options. I was looking into this earlier to, I mean, you as in like an end user can just submit your site to Google for re-indexing, either providing them a link or if you have a site map, 
Um, you're kind of uh, at their whims. They say anything from like, you know, two days to a week or two to re-index your site. So um, I don't know if, if there's something we can do more under the hood. Um, but at least if you just like, you know, search for re-index site, Google's got a couple uh, articles on it. Cool. Yeah, thanks for that. And I think I've done that in the past uh, for, for some of the smaller sites that I've worked on. So something to consider. I, I think between the redirects and the work you're doing, Seth, we're, we're going to be all right. But I, I've seen a few of those 4.4 uh, four dead links kind of creep up. And I think we're going to get bit by Google searches and old documentation. And we need to be able to combat that a little bit or at least uh, r reduce the impact. So uh, that's all I really want to bring up. It sounds like, uh, Seth, you're willing to take that over. Yeah, and, I can look into, uh, I can look into all of that. that. Perfect. Definitely. Perfect. Yeah. And it's not going to be uh, one solution. We're done. It's going to be an ongoing effort, like you were talking about modifying uh, documentation and all that. So that's uh, pretty much all I had on that issue. I saw that uh, Zach had a drop. So um, does anyone else have any other issues they'd like to uh, talk about? Hearing nothing, I will uh, give a countdown here. All right, that's a SIG Docs meeting. Have a good one, everybody.